So what do you do if LVNV has a judgment against you and is threatening collection efforts like wage garnishment or other seizure of assets? My name is Michael Waslick. I'm one of the lawyers at Ricardo and Waslick, and together with my partner, Jason Ricardo, I help people just like you overcome foreclosure and debt collection with dignity. And today I'm going to tell you what you need to do if LVNV has a judgment against you and is threatening collection. Typically, there are two ways a court might get to the point where they find it is proper to enter judgment allowing LVNV to begin collection efforts. Number one is if you have participated in the case in some way and the judge has found that your defenses are not proper or that LVNV has proven its case. The second way is if you fail to participate either because you didn't get proper notice or because you got notice and failed to timely respond either by showing up in court or by filing the required papers with the court to challenge LVNV's right to collect. In the first case, if you have participated in the process and you have raised offenses or you have challenged LVNV's right to collect, or if you show up and say they have a right to collect and a judgment's been entered against you, that is going to be something that is properly entered. It's not subject to challenge in most cases, the vast majority of cases, it's not subject to challenge. And you are going to have little option except to try and negotiate some type of payment that will allow you to obtain what's called a satisfaction of judgment, which is simply a written document filed in the public record that shows that you have paid the judgment off and it is no longer something that can be collected against you. In order to get that satisfaction of judgment, you'll probably have to negotiate either some kind of discounted lump sum if they're willing to do that for you, or you might want to negotiate a payment plan over a period of time something we generally don't recommend because usually those contain hidden traps and they require longer periods of time than most people can afford. But once a judgment has been entered against you, your leverage is limited, so you might have no choice but to agree to something like that unless you want to have your wages garnished and lose 25% of every paycheck. But if a judgment has been entered against you and you believe that it was not proper because you didn't get notice of it or you didn't get legally served by a process server or the summons and complaint was never delivered to you and and as a result, because you didn't know about the case, you didn't participate in the case, that is something that you can challenge. Under Florida law, a judgment is void if you don't get legal proper notice of the proceedings, starting with service of process by a process server who delivers to you a summons and a complaint that tells you what you need to do to respond, either show up on this day in court or file a written answer and give a copy to the lawyers for the other side. And if you don't get that notice, the court does not have the power to enter a judgment against you. That judgment then becomes void and you have a right to set it aside if you can prove the process server didn't deliver the papers or didn't comply with the law for legal notice of the case. Or if you did get the original summons and then there was some later part of the proceedings that you didn't get notice of and you can prove that, that is something that you can challenge. And in order to challenge service of process, a couple of things have to happen. First of all, you have to identify in what way the process was valid. Did the process server fail to deliver it as they indicated? So for example, let's say a process server says, I came to your house on June 1st and delivered it to you personally. And they wrote, and they wrote that down and submitted that to the court. But you can prove on June 1st, you weren't actually there. You have some kind of documentation that proves you weren't at the address that the process server claims to have served you on on that day, then you might be able to challenge that. Or if you can prove, for example, that you never lived there at all, um, we've seen that happen where a process server goes to the wrong address and delivers papers to the wrong person and then claims to have served the person. Well, if you can prove that the address that's on the summons is somewhere I never lived or somewhere I wasn't living at that time, then you can get that judgment vacated. And so so whatever grounds you have to challenge the service of process would be put in a motion to quash the service. And we also like to ask to vacate the void judgment, meaning we're asking the court to undo the judgment that was improperly entered. And then the court will set a hearing and we'll hear testimony from the process server and from you about whether or not you were properly served. And if the court agrees with you that you were not properly served, will enter an order quashing the service of process, meaning that they declare it invalid. And if service of process is quashed, then they will also vacate the judgment, meaning that is now gone. That's the type of thing you need to do in order to attack a judgment that was entered against you without notice. 
If there's some other stage in the proceeding where you didn't get proper notice, you will still have to prove that. You'll still have to document that in your motion and probably with live testimony. That is something that we can help you with. So hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, please leave a like. If you know somebody else who has a judgment against them and might need to hear this, go ahead and share it with them using the share button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.